Okay. So again, my name is Nancy Allen. And I serve as executive director for the National Consortium for Health Science Education. And one of our um, strategic priorities is to support the teacher down to the classroom level. And so by doing that, we certainly want to provide you with some resources, some strategies for delivering the National Health Science Standards. And so we contracted with two teachers. They actually were both from South Carolina, Katrina Haynes and Rhonda Evett. And they did an outstanding job of totally revising these enhancements. So if you had them in the past, they were once on a CD, they were once on a flash drive. And then a few years ago, we went to the uh, download from our website. But if you had them in the past, you had a completely different version because um, these two ladies did an awesome job of total revision. And so we're extremely proud of their work and we wanna to continue to promote that. And these um, enhancements will be um, current until we revise the standards or tweak the standards again, which probably will not be for a couple of years. But today we have with us Melissa Sparks and her background is that she's a certified athletic trainer and she actually has been in education for 21 years. She's taught in North Carolina and South Carolina, and currently she's in North Carolina. And she's taught health and PE, but for the last 10 years, she's been one of us. She's been a health science teacher, and we are just um, excited that she was willing to um, talk to us today about how she uses the enhancements and how they have been beneficial to her. And she's going to add a few things about her program or, or some of the strategies in her program as well. Lastly, because you're here today, we will send you a certificate of participation. So you can use that to document one hour of professional development if that's helpful to you. Um, we'll just send that to you and you'll be able to insert your name. It might be seven to 10 days. Our staff is part time. And so, but no, we haven't forgotten about you. We can track your attendance here and we'll send you um, that certificate if that's something that you need for certification or recertification. And don't forget about all of our webinars that will be coming up. Um, they're posted on our website and um, we do those two to four times a month on Wednesdays and we try to be very um, selective about topics that we think will be helpful to you. And then this Saturday, we're, we're doing a health science boot camp. It's from one to five Eastern time. It's going to be uh, 45 minute sessions. You don't have to come to all of them. You don't have to register separately. If you register, you can drop in. But uh, for new teachers or experienced teachers who might just need a little inspiration. So that's a little bit about our professional development. I've talked way too long. And Melissa, it's all yours. Thank you for doing this. You're welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Again, my name is Melissa Sparks. I'm in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And I met Nancy and really got involved in the consortium when I was living in South Carolina. It, it's, there's a conference at the end of October, and it's an amazing conference. And I'm really excited that Winston-Salem is going to let me go this year. Um, I'm going to share with you in the chat a link to the, it didn't go, I'm going to show it again, a link to the PowerPoint that I'm going to use today. One of the things that I would like to know is, and I don't know that I'll be able to read it super quick, but um, who is still virtual versus who, actually, I'm, yeah, I don't know why I presented that for myself, I need to share it with you. Um, who, who is virtual now and who is in person? That would be, so the, the enhancements are great. I didn't move stuff around on my screen, so I can show. Um, the enhancements are great. And um, I'm gonna share my whole screen so that I can jump around because I'm gonna wanna do that. Can you guys see the PowerPoint? Wait, okay. okay. I wanna be sure the right thing shared. Um, the, the, the great thing about the enhancements for me is that they, they can go either way. I, I was 100% online last year, and I got them, I'm thinking two or three years ago, I'm going to be honest, I did not, that I remember, go through that start here that everybody talked about. I um, just kind of started, I saved the enhancements on a flash drive, and it's the one that has all of my curriculum on it. And so I just kind of pulled it up and started looking through. I know in, uh, so let me, let me do this to kind of get started. 
started. Um, so I have some disclosures. None of this, none of these ideas are mine. I, I can't take credit for any of them. I am surrounded by some really smart people who are willing to share. And that's with the enhancements and then activities that I do in my classroom that are that are not from the enhancements. All of that is because I know smart people, not because I'm super smart and came up with, with stuff. I know a lot of people who are very creative and can come up with a lot of great ideas, but I'm not one of them. Um, Melissa, Melissa, you may want to put your um, PowerPoint on presentation mode. Okay. And also um, for everyone, um, Melissa is going to pause occasionally and take questions, but you can put them in the chat. I've agreed to be her Vanna White. So if, if you, you know, if it's a pressing question, be sure and put it in there and we'll um, direct it to uh, the expert. Okay. Yeah. So my school was completely online last year. And I don't think that's so easy. Okay. And so I started looking for activities last year that I could have them do online. And then this year, that would be totally hands-on because every day when we come in, and right now we're covering the skeletal system. And I, I started to do a little bit of stuff digitally where we could use the Google Jamboard and we could color on it. And the kids are like, no, I'm tired of computer. I want it all hands-on. So I started printing out the coloring sheets that we're using because the students don't want the digital this year. And um, hopefully we stay in person, but we're kind of planning for either way. So what I teach, I feel like there was something I was going to say before I remembered that I needed to tell you kind of where, where my information comes from. But what I teach is in North Carolina, we have Health Science 1, and Health Science 1 here is anatomy, physiology, and then diseases of all the body systems. I know for when I taught in South Carolina, that was the same course that was called medical terminology there. And I know that I saw there were a lot of you that were not North and South Carolina. I saw some Georgia, I saw Minnesota, I saw Oklahoma, I saw, I saw some Georgia. I'm trying to remember what all I saw as you guys were saying where you're from. But so I don't know what the courses are called in your state. So I tried to describe what the course is that I teach here. So health science one's anatomy, physiology, and um, so as I was looking through, I went to academic foundations and enhancement because that's where all of this stuff for my classes would be, my health science one class this first semester would be located. So I don't know that I went to the start year and, and saw how to do it. I just started looking through all the folders and saw stuff that kind of caught my eye. And then kind of opened it up, read through the instructions a little bit tweaked what I needed to, and then kind of ran with it. Health Science 2 is, for us, it's intro to health careers. It's the employability skills, um, legal and ethical, cultural diversity. Then we go to safety and infection control. Here, Health Science 2 has the respiratory system, the cardiovascular system, and CPR, as well as stop the bleed. And then, our final chapter is the technical skills, how to take vital signs and, and breaking down the therapeutic diagnostic, health informatics and, and the, um, Rhonda, I'm sorry, um, Katrina, I was gonna look and see if my, if my volume was up all the way too, since you said I was, I need to be louder. So where we are going to start is, so I kind of broke down the presentation into, the different sections. And I'm hoping you can see me some in addition to just my PowerPoint. Because the first thing I thought about doing is we all, a lot of us have been in school all day and I've been in school all day. So I was thinking, what is something kind of fun that I could, I could start you with? And so if you will stand up. I'm going to stand up if you guys don't understand stand up on myself, but that's okay. Um, so there's the first one that I have on here is in the enhancements under body organization. So I kind of titled where it is in the, in the enhancements to help you out a little bit. But the first one I want to talk to is actually the last, uh, the last one on the screen, but kind of further down on the screen. And it is called Simon Six. So what I did with my students as we were doing the medical terminology is we did Simon Six. So I said, okay, everybody stand up, show me pronation. 
And if they did like this, show me pronation, you got to sit down because Simon didn't say. So then I would say, okay, show me point in a lateral direction. And so if they pointed lateral, if I said Simon says, I got to stay up and keep playing. If not, they sat down. And it was a really quick, really easy warm up to get them started and to review what we had done the day before. So I don't know if anybody did it with me, but that was just a couple of things to kind of show you how I, how I started that as a review activity. Um, the first thing on that list is called the cardboard man. And like I said, this one came off somebody else's idea in Facebook. And so I went to our dollar journal back up a little bit so you can see the whole guy. I found this template of like a gingerbread man on, on Google. And I got a template that I was able to trace on cardboard. I went to Dollar General and they gave me cardboard boxes that they were getting rid of. So I drew out the outlines, but I made the students cut because that was a lot of thick cardboard to cut through. So in class, the students got to cut out the cardboard guy. And the student I borrowed this from didn't complete the assignment. But the first thing I had them do was the nine abdominal regions on the cardboard guy on one side. And then I wanted them to, on the back side, do the four quadrants. So they could put organs that were in the four quadrants and things that they needed to know about that on one side. And then the nine regions of the abdomen on the other side. Then the next day, we came with poster board paper and we did the planes of the body. So the frontal plane, the sagittal plane, and the transverse plane, just to help them have something in their hand that they could use to help them review for the test and prepare themselves for what we were doing. So those are their Google Expeditions is now arts and culture, and I've not been able to play with that enough to be able to tell you how that works now. Google Expedition was awesome. I could take my phone and every student took their phone. I guess I should probably warn you. I talk fast, so if I need to slow down, please let me know. Um, so we we took the at home. We took the Google Expedition. I put it on my Canvas page, which is the learning management system that we use. And so the students could scan the the QR code on their phone, and then they could pull up. So we could look at the skeletal system. We could go top to bottom, see the bones, how they're shaped. And just really explore the body with Google Expeditions. It's been changed and hopefully it's as good, but I haven't really gotten to play with that yet to find out. Um, so I, I'm more than happy to hear anybody else's experiences as we get to the question part. If anybody has used arts and culture and has any, any feedback on that. The Oregon Roundup is also in body organization. And that is where the students are creating wanted posters. And I got, I did mine virtual, digital, and I don't think I opened it yet. I did mine digital, and one of my coworkers, she did hers on posters. So I stole hers out of her room just so I could show it a little bit. And it's a wanted poster. This one's for the skeletal system. And it says wanted, the reward is $30,000 for. Cowboy mixed scully bones and her student did an awesome job with the with the artwork and stuff on it. And so I, I thought it was really cool. But what you do is you create a wanted poster for the organ. So they are gonna the students are gonna investigate what system the organ comes from, what its main function is. Does the organ work alone or does it work with other systems? And I think every organ we have works with other systems. So that was kind of an easy answer there. What, what other systems does it work with? And at least three ways that those systems work together. Then what are three diseases that can affect that particular organ? And can your body function without the organ? And so they just had to create, and then they had to list their sources, but they just had to create a wanted poster for the organ. And I assigned my students organs. I came up with the list of organs, listed those on the board, excuse me. And they picked the organ that they wanted to do their research on. And they did a lot of the not really popular organs so that they had to learn stuff about organs that they were less likely to already know about. Um, then one that I have not yet used, but I thought was pretty cool in the body organization is called the Tissue Family Reunion. And the, kid, the students are writing a story. 
And in my experience, and I'll talk about it a little more when I get to employability, but in my experience, students are not very good at writing papers. I don't know if that's a new thing or it's always been that way and I just didn't have them write very many papers. But um, this one is they're creating a story about the family getting back together. So the tissues all went out and they got jobs and they lived far away from home. And now they've come back for a family reunion and they're having to tell what they've been up to and what their job is and how hard they're working. Um, and there are some there are some digital formats that students can use that. I, if we're hands on and my students being complaining about the digital stuff, I would probably have them do it as a one page um, just written paper. Hopefully they have good handwriting because that, that would be my only concern with allowing them to handwrite it and not keeping that on the computer. So just kind of getting the feedback that I've gotten in the last two days. I love the activity, but I want to try to find some way that I could do it hands on since they're really tired of, of the digital stuff. However, if we end up going back to um, to digital school, cross my fingers, no, but if we ever end up going back to digital school, then that would be something for um, to think about because it can go either way. The next one is a skeletal terms relay. And with this one, I do a relay of the, of the parts of the skeleton. So I have a little part here called the tibia. And it's, it's magnetic and I have a magnetic skeleton on my dry erase board. So then the students have each a set of the terms and they compete. I have, my, my class is really small this year. So my first period class, I have eight students. So I'd have two groups of four and they compete against each other to see as we're learning the skeletal system, who remembers the most. So that's the first thing I do with these. And then there is a, there's also an activity, it's later, I found it in legal ethical, but there may be more than one, I may have just missed the other ones, but I could put this on my forehead and play headband. It's the game where they put a word on their forehead and they don't know what the word is. So I'm kind of cheating because I can see the word. But then you guys would describe what that is and I would have to guess what that one was. So you might tell me the, the shin bone or the bone that's on the center, I'm sorry, front of the lower leg, the bone carrying 80% of your body weight. And I would have to guess that that is your tibia. So I, I was really excited about the head masking and I'm gonna find ways to play that because with just trying to get the students to number one, socialize and work together because that's a really big focus of my school system. And, um, remember the, the parts that we're learning. Both of those, I think that game will be phenomenal for helping students do that, do both of those. Melissa, are you tra are you um, transitioning to another slide or were you just um, talking there? Just um, about to. Okay, all right, just got the message, a question, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, was the question was that about the transition or? Oh. They just didn't know if they were missing, if you, when you were talking about the headband oh, game. Sorry. That was okay. on the slide. Okay. The headband is actually written with legal and ethical when I get to that, but I just felt like it could go anywhere. So I went ahead and, and talked about it just then while I had those magnets right beside me. And I should be clicking. There we go. Okay. So, oh, yeah, and I forgot to move ahead. So thank you for telling me. So the skeletal relay, um, there is a, there's an activity in the enhancements where you can print out full-size skeletons and print out the labels where you can either Velcro it or tape them on, just kind of keeping away, keeping in mind that if you tape it, it's gonna tear up, you're gonna print it again the next time you do it. But that is, that's an excellent way to, to test the students and see how much they're remembering. The muscular system, I couldn't find a lot that really appealed to me with the muscular system. I do a lot of coloring and labeling. Um, as an athletic trainer, I've been teaching anatomy since 2001, and um, the, the color and label was just always something that, that worked really good, and so I haven't really gotten away from that yet. 
as I learn super cool things, I, I might get away from color and label, but right now that's my thing. Um, with the integumentary system, in the enhancements, there is a Snickers lab. And with that Snickers lab, all my students are going to love it because they get to eat. And anytime I give them food, they love it. So with the Snickers lab, you have the students cut the Snickers bar in half, and then they compare the Snickers, there's a lab write-up sheet, and you compare the Snickers bar to how your skin looks and the different layers of the skin. So that I have not done yet because we weren't in person and we weren't hands-on last year, but it's in my agenda for, for skeletal now. So I'll be doing that in two weeks. So I've got that one in my agenda. And I've also got, there's a sunscreen lab. And with a sunscreen lab, I've asked all the teachers at my school if anybody has any expired sunscreen. I have really pale skin and I burn really easy. So I can't let my sunscreen expire. So I don't have any. But I've asked all the teachers at my school if anybody has an expired sunscreen to send that in. Um, the other things that I would need to do that would be black construction paper, glass slides like my class has, and then um, a black light. Though, and they're all listed on the on the paperwork for the lab and the enhancements. But what you do is you put different levels of sunscreen and different ages of sunscreen on those glass slides, and the the black light is gonna, and this is not exactly, so hopefully you look at your enhancements instead of just quoting exactly what I'm saying, but um, so the black light is gonna shine through the sunscreen and show you how effective that sunscreen is. If it's expired, I don't know, and if Rhonda or Katrina wanna pipe in for a second, um, one of my teachers asked me if the spray on sunscreen would work as good, and that I was not sure about. Um, so I told her I prefer the lotion, but if anybody tells me that the spray on will work too, then I've got some more sources there. Melissa, um, uh -huh. just a request from someone to use your teacher voice. Um, they said, and there's a little bit of an echo, so um, you can act like we're all hearing impaired and use your teacher voice. Got it. I will try to get louder and, okay. and do more. Oh. So where I want to go now is I need to exit out of the PowerPoint and move that stuff. Okay, I'm, I'm going to not get quiet as I, as I talk to myself through this. So this one is digital, but you could always print it out and allow the students to move the arrows around, around or cut the arrows out and move them around. So this one is a drag and drop for blood flow. So we've moved into the cardiovascular system. Oh. I need to go back from it. I forgot something. So um, the last one on the integumentary system was a TB lab. And I was the leader for the Forsyth County Camp Med this summer. So students came out to my school and they just did some medical labs. And one of the ones we were kind of reaching the end of the week and we had run out of things to do. And we had just gone for a field trip to the health department. And one of my coworkers who was with me she had just come here from the health department. So she worked there previous and she got the health department to donate to us a whole bunch of syringes. So when we got back, what she did is she taught all the students how to give TB tests. So we got hot dogs and they drew a little bit of water into the syringe and they injected it in the hot dog just barely under the skin until we saw that blister come up, just like a TV test. The kids loved it. So um, I'm not a nurse, so I'm a tag team with her when I teach that part of the integumentary system. If she and I both talk inside, we want to do that with health science. But um, that was a really cool activity that kids loved. I just saw the, the syringe sitting there and remembered I forgot that. Um, so with the... Uh, yeah, so all of these drag and drop. So where does the blood go? And are they using a blue arrow or a red arrow to say that that is oxygenated or non oxygenated blood? So that was a that was a pretty cool activity. And especially for my online kids, so it was something easy that they could do. Um, okay. um, so the drag and drop. Then there's a blood flow tic-tac-toe. So you make a tic-tac-toe card and the parts of the tic-tac-toe board, and I think I have that up too. 
of the parts of the tic tac toe board yes. are the way the blood flows through the body. So you've got the superior inferior vena cava, the Why? Am I not? That, that would, wouldn't that be the right atrium? Is there some other terminology for it that I'm not getting right there? So I'm thinking the right atrium. No, that, that should totally be right, the cool. atriums. <laughs> okay. So I was like, what, what, what did I do wrong? Am I, am, is there some other terminology that I'm not thinking? Atrium, so, ventricle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the pulmonary arteries, the lungs, the pulmonary veins. And then bringing blood well, after the lungs, bringing the oxygenated blood back to the heart, the pulmonary veins, the left atrium, left ventricle, and the aorta. So it takes the blood through. And if, if students really just can't visualize the heart, they might be able to visualize that a little better. I think also on that same slide with the heart, I have the Who Am I card template. So these are matchings. So you cut out, I receive blood from the pulmonary vein. And then if we scroll down lower, they're also cut out for the answers. So the pulmonary vein brings blood into the left atrium. Second. And these are, look like they're all lined. I didn't pay attention to that before. Looks like they are lined up. Yes. So as you cut them out, you want to mix them all up so that they, the students don't uncover them together. And that, that could be where you have a multitude of just review games to prepare for the test that you're about to take. The asthma activity, let me get those out of my way. The asthma activity, I'm going to, I forgot my straw. I'm taking a straw to my drink. But the asthma activity, how that works is you have students, they can either bring their own straw or you can find straws. Um, I've done it with regular size straws and stirring straws. The stirring straws, I don't get quite as much activity because those are smaller straws. But with a regular straw, rather than breathing through their their mouth and nose while they're walking around the school building or walking up and down stairs. And I'm on the third floor of the building in my classroom. And so I can go there are stairs right outside my door. So I can send them outside and have them walk down the stairs and they're only allowed to breathe through the straw. And then they come back and that, that simulates that they were to have asthma and help them to be a little more empathetic to their patients if they have when they have patients in the future that have asthma and are, or and or are having any breathing difficulties. Um, so the nervous system, the screen, the picture on your screen is a digital cranial nerve flip book. So what I had the students do is they created a flip book. So this was the first page of this cranial nerves by me. And then when they clicked and this is just a picture, it's not active. But when they clicked on the picture, it took them to cranial nerve number one. And if, if most of you or any of you are involved in the Facebook page, there's a, there's a Nishi Facebook page. Um, and then there's also a Health South Carolina Health Science Facebook page that I'm, I'm a member of. And I see a lot of people put share stuff. And then a lot of people ask for direction. And while I would love to share with you, I don't, I don't really have directions. I can't read this, up. this might be one of the only things on this thing that I made up, but I probably saw it from somebody else. Um, so when they clicked, when they did cranial nerve number one, they did the nerve, they did, I'm trying to remember exactly everything they did. So they had to do the nerve, they had to do what the nerve did, how they tested it, and then they had to find a mean that would show that test. And they had to do that for all 12 cranial nerves. Okay, I don't know where I'm going. Come back, come back. Come back. Sorry about that. Um, so that was 
one, then I have purchased the clay with the anatomy and clay. And so with the, like that work, I can see you guys a little more. Um, with the nervous system, I did a lot of Star Wars stuff. So I would go with the, the, it, it's not anatomy and clay. That's the other one. Um, uh, um. Hands on body systems. Yes, thank you. Oh my gosh, she's gonna kill me. I'm gonna die. Um, so the hands on body systems. So we've got internal parts, and then I also have the brain and the spinal cord. So all the different lobes of the brain were different colors and spinal cord. And she has a whole lot more that she did with it. Um, I can't remember. Where. If on that one we ran out of time or exactly why that was where we stopped. But I love the hands on body systems and all that Star Wars got. And this year, trying to add more hands on into class, I'm trying to flip my class where the students do more pre learning at home and then we get to do a lot of fun activities in class. And the clay is going to be one of those things that we add in a whole lot more than we have. Another person that has done some publications is Kim Smith. And a couple of years ago, I was at the Nishi conference and she was there doing a presentation and she's got a book of all these brain games. And it, it's just paperwork where the students work in groups to figure stuff out. So I do a lot of her brain games with the nervous system. And those are they're just kind of, they're kind of they're worksheets where either like maybe you're given nerves that come out of the spine and which one doesn't belong. And so they're like about 15 to 20 normally different problems they have to figure out. There's a word drop where you have a sentence and it's got blanks in it and it's got the letters that could possibly fill that sentence down below it. And the, the students have to kind of narrow down and Place. So, so the, the lines where there is no letter, they take that letter and they put it in first. They do their single, double, and triple letter words. So A, A, and B, anything they can figure out like that, they do that second. And then they try to figure out what letters are left to create words. And she's got a lot of those with a lot of different body systems. And uh, she was selling that at one of the health science conferences I went to on a classroom. So I already have all those worksheets digital and there are just sometimes when I need to add those to what I'm doing. Um, okay. The endocrine system in the enhancements, there is an endocrine comic strip. And when I initially wrote it down, I thought that's the one that I used, but I didn't use a comic strip. I, I used the text message. And then with the endocrine text message, the the students were assigned a hormone and they had to write a text message to another hormone. Um, so a lot of like a student who picked the, let's say the reproductive system. Um, and let's say that it was the ovary and the ovary was releasing the eggs. So it had to send a message up to the, it's balls in the brain. To, to talk back and forth. The specific example in the enhancements were from the pituitary gland. So the pituitary gland is sending a, is sending a message out and it, it says from the, from the pituitary, it says, this is a group text, do not message me back. It's how you slackers to start building muscles and bones. And one of the other glands shoots back, who does, who does the pituitary gland think they are? And, um, then bones replies to that and says, this is bones. Uh, the pituitary gland thinks they're the boss. And the muscle say back, um, but I'm tired. I don't want to build muscle. And the bones say, you're always tired. So it's a, it's a text message conversation between either glands, the gland and what it innervates or, or sorry, what it stimulates. Or they, it can be back and forth between lands. You kind of, the kids can kind of go crazy with creativity on that one. Um, I'm trying to see. There are some 
websites. And for some reason, I'm not seeing that. But there are some fake text message websites where the students could create that online and make it look like a real text message, like it just came off their phone. So that was a pretty cool activity. And then the one that really got me here is that I do a poop lab with the digestive system. And I put on Facebook one day that my principal came in and observed me when I was doing the poop lab. And she, and we, we were online and I still had the students do it online. But she, a lot of my students would refuse to turn the cameras on, but she talked every single one of them into turning their camera on so that she could see their poop lab um, and see the poop that came out. So if they put a lot of water in, they never had diarrhea. But the, the way it, it worked is I used cereal in a Ziploc bag and the, the enhancements go a lot more detailed than I did. I just kind of did basic, but um, the enhancements have it there as well. I had the students put cereal in a Ziploc bag, then they put water on top of the cereal. Oh, sorry, before they put the water in, they had to crunch up the cereal, like they were chewing it up. They were masticating their cereal. Then they had to add some water as if they had added saliva and swallowed it. If they had green food coloring at home, they put some green food coloring in to, simul to simulate the bile from the gallbladder. Then there's, there's a couple steps in the middle of the small and large intestine that, that we didn't do because they were home. But then at the end, we cut a tiny little corner of the Ziploc bag out. And depending on how much water they had, they might have had diarrhea, they might have been constipated, they might have had perfect poop. Um, so when we're in class, we cut out that bottom corner and they stand over a trash can and, and they each squeeze their poop out and they, it's disgusting and they love it. So um, that was almost the last activity. That's my big one for the digestive system. And then the last activity for health science one for me, because we finished up with reproductive system, is the balloon ping pong ball delivery activity. And we use the balloon to simulate the uterus and the ping pong to simulate a baby. So what they have to do is they have to stretch out their, their um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so you can see what's in here. Um, so, I, so I go big. Um, so they have to stretch out their balloon so they can blow it up. And they're gonna blow it up a couple times just so that it's loose. And then there's even on the paperwork I give out, it says if they let their balloon fart or fly across the room, then they have to stop the lab. They can't do it. I blow it up a couple times, then they have to take it from the very top and they have to stretch the balloon out so that they get down to the belly of the balloon because otherwise they're not going to be able to get the ping pong ball in. So then they take the ping pong ball and they fit it in the balloon. Ouch. So the ping pong ball is in the balloon. Now we're going to blow the balloon up. And they can make their uterus as big as they want to. That's totally up to them. And when you hold it up this way, the ping pong ball is going to go on top of the exit of the balloon. So they're not going to be able to let all the air out. So then what they're going to do is they're going to simulate contractions. So contractions. If they start down in the middle of the uterus, nothing's going to happen. But if the contractions start up at the top, then the ping pong ball starts to work its way down. And so then you can talk about how the cervix thins and dilates as the contractions are happening. And hopefully I will break my computer. <laughs> but as, as you keep squeezing from the top of the balloon, the ping pong is going to continue to work its way down. The cervix is going to continue to dilate. And eventually, the ping pong ball and it hit the floor. But the ping pong ball comes out of the balloon and pops out. And half of them stick it or um, blow it across the room. And I tell them, please don't blow it up in the air because you're going to pop your your classmate, and that's going to be bad. So um, they they love that one. <laughs> Mine, he's uh, he's he's probably a boy. <laughs> but um, but they, the kids love that laugh. I always have my 
my administrators hate it when we talk about reproductive systems. So always say, come in that day. Because while it is a reproductive system and you're not going to like it, it's a cool activity that, that everybody really enjoys. Um, Miss Nancy, I haven't even gotten to help tonight, too. Am I out of time? Or am I out of time? I'm getting out of time. I love the way she called me Miss Nancy, so I'm 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 her elder here, which I am. So um, she was talking so fast, and and she had so much to share. And I told her, I said, don't feel like you have to get through all of this because we can always do a part two for for next semester. And so. Um, with that, I thought maybe we just open it up and, um, you know, we just have all friends here. So if somebody wanted to unmute yourself and maybe um, add on to anything that Melissa had to share, realizing that she really just got through standard one because she, she did mention a little bit about how some of these activities show up in another standard. I, I remember you mentioned legal and ethical, but um, if anybody wanted to, um, unmute yourself and add especially Rhonda or Katrina if there was anything that you had that you had to um, would like to reinforce things that Melissa said or if anyone um, if we can be helpful to you in other ways. And I will add one more thing any of those activities that are mine that I talked about I'm happy to go back into the PowerPoint and create links there because you guys you guys all have access to that PowerPoint through the chat so um I'm happy to do that if anybody would like any of that information. Katrina, I did tell them, I think somebody asked, of course, it's recorded and, and it'll be posted on our website and we can um, take your slides to up to where you got through Health Science One for what you teach in North Carolina in that course. And you can put the links in there and we can um, post that part of your PowerPoint along with the um, with the recording. I see Jessica just asked about that too. So we're happy to do that. And then we'll just save all that you have prepared beyond that because you always over, don't you always over prepare because you get so excited about it, but we're happy to do that as well. So Katrina, were you about to say something? You said my name. And so that's like, uh oh, you said Katrina. I think you meant to say Melissa, but it's all good. Oh, Melissa, okay. you did. You did a great job, Melissa. Thank you for staying after school. I can tell you're in your classroom, probably would rather be home, but thank you for sharing what what worked for you. And that is more valuable than me and Rhonda running our mouths. So thank you. And I like it when you guys run mouths. <laughs> and I, uh... I, I think it, it's great for us to hear a perspective from from you guys that are using it. These, you know, when when we created these, these were actual activities we came up with and used, and like, so that's why we, that's what I mean. We basically just shared them through Nishi. Now there's a bunch in there that we didn't create, and we and we give credit where credits due. But you know, we we hope that some of that stuff's been helpful and. Especially for those, I know and, and healthcare people just dive right into stuff. And I think that's been one of the biggest um, things about navigating the enhancements is just getting in there and skipping over the whole first section and getting right into the meat of stuff. And that's where everybody has trouble navigating because there's a big start here file in the very beginning. And that's where we address um, a lot of the here's how to do this or just like these and and here's video links and that stuff and um we are going to be at the pre-conference for an all day or we're going to be uh if you can get to nationals we're so we're so excited because we're bringing so much crazy stuff and um it's going to be a big party and um bring everything when uh, you got and y'all come join us there because it's it that way we can interact with you and answer questions and Sometimes you're just so overwhelmed in a webinar, it's too much. Um, and we get that, but do go on. You have to scroll down, scroll down, scroll down on the mission website to see the enhancement webinars that we did. But we put videos everywhere, man. We know that y'all need them to just kind of walk you through it. So thanks, Melissa. You did a great job. Thank you, Becky. Hey, um, 
I think Rhonda was referencing the National Health Science Conference when she said national. So the National Health Science Conference is on the end of October. We are doing it in person because we do have a hotel contract and we are, um, you know, we have to um, realize that they need to make money as well too. So we're excited that some people are able to travel. There is a virtual option. So if you're not able to travel and can't get approved to do that, um, there, there will be parts of the conference that will be available to those of you who can join virtually. So um, we encourage you to go to our website. It's right on the homepage at healthscienceconsortium.org. Thanks, Katrina. She just put the link there, but um, right on the homepage, it says for conference information. So you can see whether um, that would be something of benefit to you. Um, we will... Um, in 2022, the National Health Science will be in Charleston, South Carolina. You'll remember that in 2020, we had hoped to be in Charleston, but we went completely virtual. So they were very uh, kind to allow us to postpone our contract for two, two years. So um, in the last week in October of 2022, we'll be in Charleston, South Carolina. So go ahead and start making plans for that. Remember that our boot camp for new and or experienced teachers will be this Saturday. There was a glitch in the registration um, link and somehow it got set on 100. And so I heard from some teachers to say, is it really closed? And, and no, it's not. And so after we opened, we got another 50 people to register. So we know that messaging did get out. So if you're interested in the teacher boot camp, um, you can register there. Um, on the website, it's if you just click on uh, upcoming events or events, there's a link there to the boot camp, and you should have gotten it. Um, maybe a message um, if you um, if you are a member of the Facebook page for the Health Science Educators Association, we put information out there too, and also Katrina put the link there. So um, that there will be five four hours of content there. You don't have to come to it all. Um, we have the schedule listed there. So if there are certain topics that are, are of interest to you, we'll stay on task. And on the hour, we'll be starting uh, new presentations. So, or maybe sometimes it's on the 45 minutes, but that'll be Saturday. And we did do it from one to five because the last time we did a virtual ed conference, we heard from our friends in Hawaii to say that they really didn't like getting up at four o'clock in the morning. Although they loved us, they really didn't like the 4 a.m. start time. So we did select the 1 p to 5 p Eastern to be more friendly to all the six um, time zones that we have the um, opportunity to serve. So um, other questions about next week's webinar will be a little unique. It's um, it's on music therapy, and we're real excited about the American Music um, Therapy Association. They really want you to know about careers that they represent, and perhaps you have students who are very gifted in the arts, but they also are interested in health professions. And so we've not done anything with music therapy before, but they have certainly um, offered to uh, offer to be supportive of you to share information about that career. So that'll be next Wednesday at uh, four o'clock Eastern. You can go and sign up. And um, I hear I see somebody saying, as a teacher who's a classical vocalist and conductor, I am pumped about it. Okay, all right. Well, we look. You're you're our friend from DC, right? Okay. Well, we look forward to having, having you there and we hope it'll be something that um, others of you will be able to use in your classroom. Okay, anyone else? I think I'll give a shout out to Amanda Bolin. Amanda's on the call here today and she, or on the webinar. And she is the secretary for the Health Science uh, uh, Educators Association. And hopefully you received, if you're a member of that organization, you received the newsletter that, that she helped publish um, um, about two or three weeks ago. And in there, she talked a good bit about the professional development um, opportunities that we are certainly committed to um, providing for you. So Amanda took her, took her, I don't know what she did, but she won't undo her camera. She, she might not, she might be in her business pajamas, but anyway, we wanted to thank her publicly for, um, for doing that webinar for doing that newsletter for us. 
Okay. Anything else to add? I, you know, I see some people in the waiting room and I feel so bad for them because they, they're time zone challenged like me. And so they want to come in, but they're going to be sad that it's over, but um, we'll um, be sure to direct them to the website where, <clears throat> where the recording will be, will be available. <clears throat> Any other questions or ways that we can support you? I know that some of you have put notes in here that you're um, having difficulty finding your enhancements or you downloaded them and now you don't know where they are. And so make sure that you email me directly. And that's nancy at healthscienceconsortium.org. And we will um, try to be helpful to you in locating them. Okay, Melissa, do you want to have any parting words for the group? Let me see if I can get off mute. Okay. Um, I, I appreciate everybody giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, there was a lot of stuff about the health science too that I found on the health enhancements. So maybe Nancy will let me come back again in the future and dive more into that part of the curriculum. But I really appreciate all of you coming and, and taking the time out of your busy Wednesday afternoon to hang out with me. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Um, so Angie asked if there were professional um, development contact hours for Saturday. Yes. So we'll monitor attendance and we will we will get those certificates out to those of you who are able to attend live on Saturday. So Melissa, it, everybody heard you're willing to do um, part two in the spring semester. So thank you so much for today and hope to see some of you at um, our boot camp on Saturday or next Wednesday for the music therapy.